Shalom. Denny's the first one on today. Okay, holding it down. Holding it down. Shalom, shalom, everyone. Eight days straight. Wave. Wave. Whew, I think it was 10 days straight. What? First day was Thursday at sunset. So service Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I am depleted. Writer's block. <sighs> Thank the Almighty for giving me the word. But, um, shalom, um, everyone. Uh, uh, Brother Vince gave me some things to teach on. He was like, you should teach on the things of the Spirit. I was like, all right. Thank the Almighty for you people. Um, we got a couple more minutes. Sorry, four more minutes. Thank the Almighty for you people uh, pressing through all 10 days. I know you may not take the live screen, but hey, watch those videos you missed for sure. They're like 15, 20 minutes. Uh, get that daily word in. Major blessing. I would be a blessing if I was able to full-time preach because I'll probably have service on a Wednesday. But it will mainly, I'll probably, what I would do is I'll, I'll put a video on Monday will be news. And I deal with watching and praying. It'll be like the watch and pray series. Uh, and then uh, prepping. Watch and pray and prepping. It'll be all about watching and praying and prepping. And then uh, Wednesday, it'll be like teaching it'll be short and then sabbath night have dinner and then sunday a sabbath day service one or the other probably have it all sabbath night so that the people could chill out their service or do what they need to do with their family sabbath day i don't know or when the time might come sooner than you think praise the almighty i'm working on it big time big time oh um, First time we got left. Thank the Almighty for today. Uh, the Sabbath still on unleavened bread. We had a double Sabbath, so we're still eating unleavened bread, which is not bad. Probably the healthiest time we eat. A lot of that bread is processed anyway, so it's probably healthy for us regardless. Uh, getting all those uh, bad extra items in our system. Um, there's about to be a food shortage, by the way. I'm not going to scratch too much on the news because I got two minutes, but it's funny that there was plague, which is some Decepticon Megatron. The plague hit and immediately after the war hit and then immediately after the inflation and food shortage hit and all of a sudden all these straight food supply, straight buildings are burning down for some reason. All this building burned down that provides food in that building. So all these fires just happen to be burning down for these buildings. That's going to cause a food shortage. Plus the whole supply chain sanctions of stopping food and stopping all this stuff from going and fertilizer and all this stuff. So it seems like it was plague, then war that leads to famine, which leads to a great reset, our new world order. It's coming around. It's coming. It's coming. I thank the Almighty that Saints the Almighty, we watch and pray these days aren't catching us unaware. So get ready. I guarantee you watch. It will never be pre Megatron, Decepatron variant, whatever out there. Oh yeah, that's not including this flu, this bird flu that's killed, I think 2.3 million chickens across different uh, 30 states. Overall, all these chickens, they keep the chickens all combined, and so they're getting sick, and this flu is killing them, and they're worried about it spreading to humans. Research on that. I don't have the full statistics on that. I'll probably bring that tomorrow for the news. So, it's time. Welcome to True Hebrews United of the Almighty Yeshua. This should be love, holiness instructed, discipleship, Joseph Sergeant. About to get into the book again, as usual. Definitely give all honor. The Almighty, creator of all things, the author and finisher of our faith. Without him, I could be nothing. I could do nothing. I could teach nothing. I could work nothing. He's the one that determines whether tomorrow or today I will be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. He's the one that determines tomorrow or today if today is my last day. He's the author and finisher of my faith. He says that our hairs of our head are numbered. 
It says the words that we speak are numbered. The steps that we take are numbered. He knows our thoughts before we even think them, and he knows our thoughts are far off. This is why when you plan to do sin, he already has precautions. The right when you do it, chastisement came. You're like, how did that come? Or how did I get caught? Or how did this work out? Because he knows your thoughts before you even think them. So right when you try to, it's like if you already know your kid's going to sneak out because you've seen his text messages or your phone. And so you've already made provisions. And so right when you sneak out and you kids in the car, you're in the back seat. like, where do you think you're going? And he's like, oh, how did I get caught? Because he knows your thoughts before you even think them. So definitely a double the honor to the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the teachers, the elders, the bishops, the deacons across the whole planet. Pressing the line, you know, pressing the line for the most high. All those brothers out there and sisters out there really doing the work. Uh, not that one could preach, but really just pressing the line. All you brothers and sisters, keep the Almighty's commandments, statutes, judgment, precepts, and ways. I appreciate you guys. I want you guys to make it into the kingdom and be saved. I am Teacher Simon. I am not the only one on this planet. There's many teachers out there preaching truth. I preach the way of salvation. That way, men and women, and children know what to do to be saved. Sanctification of the body and of the spirit. And living holy and clean until the Almighty requires your soul or to we split those cows and come back. Definitely, if you do not have a, a congregation, you should link up with us and or find a congregation in your local area. You cannot be saved without a congregation. And you cannot be saved unless you're baptized. And you cannot be baptized unless you're baptized by a minister. It says, how can you believe on whom you have not heard? And how can you hear without a preacher? And how can you preach except you be sent? There's no way you're going to take up this Bible and save yourself. He has an order. He gave it to the apostles, the fishes and the loaves, and the apostles fed the people. They cannot go through the apostles and say, I want to get my fishes and loaves straight from the Messiah. No, he gave it to the apostles, and the apostles fed the people. They laid hands and made elders in every city. So you cannot be saved without a congregation. You cannot be saved without uh, being baptized and you cannot be saved without a minister baptizing you. You don't get any homeless person on the street baptizing you and thinking you're going to make it into the kingdom. So with all that said and being done, oh, shout out to you Facebook and YouTube people that um, share, like, subscribe, follow and comment. I appreciate you guys. Get this word out there. Please go to the YouTube channel and subscribe. We're trying to push this YouTube channel and get it, get it pressed up and get it higher. With all that said, being done, Let's let the fingers do the walking and the scriptures do the talking. We got a lot of scripture to cover in a little bit of time. So let's get busy. Galatians chapter 5. Vince uh, uh, wanted me to uh, say, teach on the fruits of the spirit. Or he said, uh, really, he said that, you know, how I teach, I'd be bringing the hammer down sometimes. And some, so I need to be more edific put more edification in my teaching. And there was a second witness to that. So I will come up higher. It's good that I get to teach today as well. So this is a major blessing. Um, so I will teach on the fruits of the spirit. It'll probably be like a seven series uh, because there's a lot to go over. Well, praise the almighty. Let's get with it. Uh, Galatians chapter five, verses 17. Galatians chapter five, verse 17. For the flesh... Our flesh lusts up against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. I'll let you guys get time. Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. My bad, I was about to start reading. You guys are probably still flipping pages. Time's up. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Why aren't you under the law? Because the law don't have power over us because we're obeying the law. Let's keep going. I don't have to worry about getting a speeding ticket if I'm staying under this in the speed limit. If I'm not going past 65, then that, that law, if you speed, you're going to get a ticket. That, that, that law has no power over me because I'm obeying. So if I'm led by the Spirit, I'm keeping the law. So the power of the law, the wages of sin is death. But that that condemnation of getting a speeding ticket and or that condemnation of going to the lake of fire will have no power over me because I'm led by the spirit. So then the law has no, I'm not under the law. It, it's, it's to none effect. I, I'm not going to get a ticket for speeding because I'm, I'm led by essentially the spirit. So I keep the laws of the most high. Let's keep going. Um, now the works of the flesh are manifest and are these adultery. So it says, you're, these people say you're not under the law, but adultery was in the law. So obviously all his examples are still in the law. Adultery, fornication, talked about being a whoremonger in the law. 
uncleanness, it talked about being unclean in law. Lascivious, it talked about doing that, like uh, so, uh, lascivious, uh, uh, like homosexuality and all that stuff as well. Uh, idolatry, we know that's in the law. Witchcraft, that's against the law. Hatred, which we said, hey, if you see your brother's ox stuck in the ditch, and we're going to deal with that with the fruits of the spirit in a little bit. So all these examples, he's using emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envious, murders, drunkenness, reviling, cussing, reviling, have a dirty mouth, and such gossip, tell bearing with a dirty mouth, and such as I tell you, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of the Almighty. This because the, we're not under the law, but the works of the flesh are these, things that are contrary to the law, like murder. It says, thou shalt not murder. But let's keep going. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperaments. Against such there is no law. So uh, uh, we're going to deal with the fruits of the Spirit, but the first one he says love. So I'm going to go to another scripture. And some of the things in love and the fruits of the Spirit overlap, so I'll teach on them, not multiple times, but I'll show you. Uh, go ahead and give me 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I'm going too fast for you guys. Let me know. Just put slow down, and I'll slow it, pop, pop on the brakes, and then that way... Um, you guys can catch up. First Corinthians chapter 13, we're going to start at verse 1. And though I speak with tongues of men and angels and have not charity, charity means love, and become a sound of brass and, and tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophesying and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I have nothing. So it says that even though you have these gifts and you could do these things, if you lack love to brothers and sisters, because remember we just read in Galatians, it says now the fruits of the spirit is first. It said love and have not love or have not charity. It says I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profit me nothing. Charity or love, charity suffer long and is kind. Envy if not, uh, it, uh, a charity that vaunted not itself is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinking no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in truth, bear up all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endure of all things. If it's in the book, I'm sure of all things. I, that's, I just put that in there. But anyway, charity never fails, but rather there'll be prophesying, they shall fail, rather there be tongues, they shall see, rather there be knowledge, it shall be banished away. So it's dealing with charity, but the first one, it says charity suffer long and it's kindness. If you have not, it's not puffed up. So we're going to deal with love today. We're going to deal with love today. And, um, but the first part of love, the first part, the very first part of love is given. The very first part of love is given, given. We're going to get into that. Go ahead and give me uh, J Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. And we're going to do love. It's going to be a two-part because I tried to squeeze it in one part, but it's just not going to happen. Just no way. John chapter 3, verse 16. For the Almighty so loved, remember the fruit of the Spirit, loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, right? That whosoever believe in him should not have power but have everlasting life. So the first thing the Almighty so loved that he gave his only Son who died on the tree or on the cross and rose on the stick or rose again the third day. But that was the last thing he did. Before he even done that, he fed fishes and loaves. He healed sicknesses and disease. He cast out demons. He taught the people. He gave his up his life at the end. His old time that he loved the people, he was given the whole time. The first part of love is given. For you to love We'll get into this a little bit. I don't want to ruin it. I'm just laying the foundation. So go ahead and give me Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. And we're going to start at verse 
38. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Praise the Lord Almighty. Yep, that's right. Uh, Princess Yehuda. That's right. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Uh, we'll start at verse, uh, yeah, we'll start at 38. Then Peter said unto him, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Yeshua Amashir for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Ruach HaKadosh. For the promises unto you and to your children, to all those that are far off, as many as our Lord our Yah shall call. And with many other words he did testify to the Lord, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. For they that gladly received the word were baptized the same day, and there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So they repented and they got baptized. And look what they did. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. Praise the Almighty. And the fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done of the apostles, and all that believed were together and had all things common. Now remember, when the apostles went out to preach, they healed sickness and cast out demons. They were given. The first thing they loved these people, the first thing they were doing is they were being a blessing to people. They didn't just preach and then once you got baptized, then we blessed. No, they were being a blessing we were given. That's why anyone that felt that falls away from True Hebrews United, and I'm not saying you're not the only one and you'll never be saved or whatnot, but everyone, almost everyone's got some kind of banner or some bookmark or a Bible or this or some music. There's not one person, there's few people that came and actually fellowshiped with us for a significant period of time and have we have not been a blessing to them. There's few people could say that we have not been a blessing to them. So, let's keep going. Verse 44, And all that believed were together and had all things common, and sold possessions and goods and parted them to men as every man had need. So you didn't have brothers uh, uh, suffering, uh, sisters suffering, and, and uh, other brothers, you know, are doing good. No, if I got to sell things or I got to split some things so brothers and sisters are taken care of. We have a situation where the majority of people in the states that are saved will help out brothers and sisters that we may not know are coming on the scene, may come in Belize, and we'll be a blessing to them because we know the opportunity is different, you know? The opportunity is different, the, in, the wages are different, and so it's, it's no problem. It's no problem for me to take care of a brother or sister that may not have the opportunity there's people born, if we save someone born in some jungle or some place in some poverty, Chicago or something, and they don't, there's no jobs out there, and you're a brother and you're doing good, hey, we got to be there for brothers and sisters. So they sold possessions just so other brothers could have, uh, uh, aren't lacking in food or lacking in shelter or lacking in clothes. And remember, clothes back in the day, they were handmade. So you maybe only had one garment. In the time of winter, you didn't have money to just buy garments and go to the store and just go through the aisles. It was none of that. You had to have money. This is why they used it as a, as a gift. A, he gave them uh, some wine and some grapes and some changes of raiment. Like if I gave you a couple of outfits today, you'd be like, man, you got that at Ross. Oh, man, I gave you a couple of shirts and a couple of pants. All good looking out. And I'll be kind of nothing. Oh, man, that's what's up, man. I appreciate it. But it's nothing. But if I gave you like three outfits back in the day, oh, thanks, man. Because they'll wear the same outfit to go to sleep in, and that's the same outfit they used to go to work. They didn't have all this stuff. So when brothers had to sell possessions to take care of other brothers, it could just be basic clothes. Or they're walking barefooted. I see people who are walking barefooted in Belize and whatnot, going to school and stuff. Like, so if you give them a pair of shoes, they're probably like, hey, thank you. Good looking out. You know, so let's keep going. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking their bread in the house to house and did eat their meat in gladness. And sing those a heart, praising the Most High, having favor with all people, and the Lord added on to the church daily as such that should be saved. So they didn't even have much of the gospel. They just knew I sinned, they repented, they got baptized, and they had the mindset, hey, we got to help the brothers and sisters out. For you to give, you have to let go of selfishness, not self uh, preservation. And we'll get into that in a little bit. But you cannot be selfish and give at the same time. You have to be able to, you cannot be selfish in love at the same time. That's a better illustration. Because for you to love, you have to give. And for you to give, you can't be selfish. So let's keep going. People do it. Go ahead and give me Malachi, Malachi chapter 3. I 
Well, and if you guys want me to talk about a topic or teach on the topic or deal with the topic, uh, feel free to put it out there. I won't deal with like dumb topics like who is Esau and stuff like that because it says we don't really deal with genealogy. If it's some topic, a trivial topic like the 12 tribe chart or something like that and everyone's congregation, their 12 tribe is different from their 12 chart and their 12 chart is different and there's 15 12 tribe charts and yeah, you could have all that. I'm going to just teach sanctification of the body and of the spirit and staying holy because we're going to get judged for every deed done in the flesh, not if you know what 12 tribes went to where. So um, Malachi chapter 3, and we're going to start at verse um, 7. You can still ask the question, but I probably won't teach on it. I'll probably answer it during the service. I just won't teach on it. So, um, Malachi chapter 3, verses 7, it says, uh, Even from the days of your fathers, you are going away from my ordinances. So our forefathers did go away. This is why we're in the land and the condition we are today and have not kept them. Return unto me. So this is talking to you as well, because our forefathers still sinned against the Most High. It says, return unto me and I will return unto you. That's a promise. If we seek the Almighty, it says, draw not unto me and I'll draw not unto you. It says the Almighty host, but he says, wherefore shall we return? It says, will a man rob the most high? Uh-oh. That's a shame when you arm robber, or you try to rob a bank or a liquor store or whatnot, but when you try to rob the most high, let's keep going. Will a, rab, <laughs> will a man rob the most high? Yeah, you have robbed me, but you say, wherefore have we robbed you in tithes and offering? And they try to play a part. What, Almighty? How did we rob you in tithes and offering? You know exactly why. Don't try to play the part. In tithes and offering, you are cursed with the curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now, even this whole nation could be, you have robbed me, also this whole nation has robbed me. Or it could be like, you are cursed with the curse, even this whole nation is cursed with the curse. Or it could mean, you have robbed me, and you have robbed the whole nation, because you haven't been paying tithes and offering. Like, if a brother or sister in the congregation doesn't give, then you're short, you're robbing the people in the congregation because everyone's working towards the direction or buying preps or doing things for the furtherance of the congregation and you're holding back. So it says, hey, you're cursed with the curse. Some of you people out there are struggling simply because you don't go feed the poor. Simply because you don't give enough. Not only robbing, uh, robbing the most high, maybe ties and offering, maybe you don't go feed the poor, but because you're worried about self more than you worried about loving the people. Loving your brothers and sisters are going out there and taking care of the poor or the needy or the fatherless or the widows. But let's keep going. It says, bring, uh, verse 10, bring all their tithes in the storehouse that you might uh, meet in my house and prove me now, henceforth, said the Almighty, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, and there shall not be room enough to receive it. So the Almighty gave a promise. If we believe in him, this takes faith when you rob them. When you give unto the Most High, it takes faith because you may not have extra money for tithes and offering in your mind and, and take care of bills and then you're starting to, uh, and now you really need to have faith in those signs and say all right here i'm gonna put it in your hands because he can bless you you're just thinking about my capabilities i can't i only work so many hours i only make so much money how can i give on to the congregation and i take care of bills and it's i i i instead of believing in the most high instead of believing in the most high he is bigger than you. He has no limit. He has no limit to what he could do. So then you, your mind is thinking what of your limits, but he is limitless. And this is where faith comes in. But let's keep going. So it says, uh, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. So some of you guys are struggling because he has a devourer on you. Devour for your sakes, and he will not destroy the fruits of the ground, neither the vines shall cast her fruit before the time, said the Almighty of hosts. So these people <laughs> robbed the Almighty, and if they're already robbing the Almighty, how are they going to love the brethren? This is why I always push that I don't mind if the car, I'd rather push quality versus quantity. I would rather be with me, I would rather face, if I have to face 10 dudes. I'd rather go with 10 dudes with Brother Vince and me and him just face the 10 dudes than go with three or four other people or nine other people and then they let me down. They, I turned back and they already ran. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would rather go through a war with brothers and sisters I could trust that's going to hold the line and hold a standard and live holy 
than to push people because these people, if they're robbing the most high, then, they, then they're not going to love you because they don't. If they're selfish towards the most high and they're hoarding stuff against the most high, how in the world are they going to love you? Because it says, hey, don't care if they, it says when they, when the all world hates you, remember before they hated you, they hated me first. If they hate you for the word you teach and the standard you have and the light of the candle, if they hate you for my sake, don't remember, remember they hated me first. This is why he told Abraham, I, this is why he said to uh, the Pharisees, it says, if you were Abraham's seed, you would have loved me because I came before Abraham. So when these people are robbing the most high, there's no way in the world they're going to love you. This is why I'd rather not be. It's hard for me to be around brothers and sisters that are dropping standards because they may be in a body and they may be baptized, but they're dropping standards here and they're dropping. Because when I talk to them over the, I don't have nothing in common because I don't, I'm not a person that likes dropping standards. I'm a person that wants to go all the way. And so when you're going 70%, it's like, man, I have no chemistry with you. You know, I, I we don't have nothing in common. You're trying to do the bare minimum. And I'm trying to say, if the righteous scarcely be saved, how shall the unjust and the ungodly appear? If our righteousness barely gets us in, how shall the unjust or the disobedient appear? And so let's go back. Give me a Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. And we're going to start at uh, verse 27. Let's get it. Acts chapter 4, verse 27. For the truth, for up, for up a, a truth against the holy Yesh, uh, child, Yeshua, whom has anointed, whom thou has anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel gathered together. For to who for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Almighty, behold, there, there this is a prayer right now, threatens and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness uh, uh, they may speak thy word, by stretching forth thy hand to heal, and that the signs and wonders may be done in the name of the holy child Yeshua. So once again they're given. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken, and when they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Ruach HaKadosh, and they spake the word of the Almighty with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that the, all, the things which they put, he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. So no matter how much money or how much I achieve, I can't say everything's my own. If my brother or sister is lacking, I got to be there for my brothers and sisters. I got to be able to open my house to any brother or sister that gets into the body. I can't say this stuff is my own, but let's keep going. And verse 33, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the uh, almighty Yeshua, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any of them that lacked. The reason why we don't have the apostles results and people getting healed and demons cast out because we don't love like the apostles did. We want the apostles results without the apostles love. This is the love they had to where they none had lack. And a lot of these congregations, there's brothers that have and brothers that don't. And, oh, I'll pray for you. They know brothers is catching the bus to service. Old ladies catching the bus to service. All that stuff. No people don't have food in their fridge. No people struggling. Well, he didn't ask me. Let's keep going. And, and neither was there any of them that lacked for as many were possessors of lands and houses sold them and brought the price that, that were sold. These people skipping out and ties and offer. And our brothers, when they first got baptized, they, they had extra houses and lands and they sold it just so they could take care of the brothers and sisters. That's how much love they had for the brothers and sisters. That's how much love we have for the brothers and sisters. That's the love we should be trying to achieve. That's the pinnacle to where if I have an extra house, how many people you know, a house is worth four hundred, five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars and you just, you did, you, the Almighty blessed you and you did good and you got one or two houses, you got a rental house and you sell that rental house so you can take care of the brothers and sisters that have lack. The love you have for brothers and sisters, that's, that's our standard right here. Right when the apostles, right when people, this is when people first start getting baptized. This is when the apostles were still on the scene. 
This is the standard that is set for every believer on this planet. You should have that much love for brothers and sisters. Let's keep going. And laid them at the apostles' feet, and description was made to every man according to he had need. And Jose, by whom uh, uh, by the apostles were surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted, son of consolation, a Levite of the country of Cyprus, had land and sold it and brought the money and laid it to the apostles' feet. Look at the love that they had. Look at the love that they had for brothers and sisters. You can't, there's no way you're selfish if you're willing to send land and houses for the brothers and sisters. Uh, hey, brother, so-and-so, hey, we have a need, man. I know you got an extra ride. Can you sell the extra ride so we can use this and take care of the brothers and sisters? No problem. No problem. Just think about it. If you're not there, this is the level we need to get. This is the level we need to get to. If your love's not there, this is the level. This is the fruit of the spirit we need to achieve. Let's keep going. Go ahead and give me um, Acts chapter 5. But you know, in every congregation, there's always those people that's robbing the most high, robbing the congregation. Acts chapter 5, very next chapter. But a certain man named Ananias and Sapphira sold a possession because everyone was selling lands and houses and taking care of the brothers and the love was there. But Ananias and Sapphira was like, man, I ain't, God didn't make me no fool. Man, I ain't selling my land and taking care Man, I got bills. I got kids to take care of. I got to leave my kids an inheritance. Man, you think I'm dumb? I'm not going to be selling all my land and give it to these people. They should have tried to. Why don't they get a job? Why didn't they apply themselves? How are you 40 years old and he's still broke? He should have applied itself. And they'll come with every reason why they just to cover up their selfishness. But let's keep going. But a certain uh, man named Ananias and Farias sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Yeah, you know, I'm about it, about it. Yeah, I love the brothers too. I sold it for 200000 I Here's $20,000. I don't know, using that as an example. Yeah, you know, I'm just like every I love the I love everyone just like it, just like these brothers love the brother. I love the brothers too. Shalom. I got some fringes on too. Shalomage to the full times ten. You know, they kept back part of the money. Let's keep going. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thy heart to lie against the rod and ditch and kept back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not in thy own? And after it was so, what is not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? That has not lied unto man, but unto the Most High. See, if they don't love the Most High, like in Malachi, they ain't going to love the brethren. They've been robbing the Almighty. You think they're going to love the brethren? Judas was robbing money out of the, the giving, the offerings. He was taking money. He was a thief. out of The whole time he was walking on your shore, uh, casting out demons. Yeah, yeah, he's the Messiah. He's the Messiah. Uh, he's the Messiah. Yeah, give unto the Messiah. You ain't going to bless the Messiah. He was robbing. Guess what? Guess who betrayed him? Same person. Same person. And say he was a thief in the very beginning. Guess who betrayed him? Because if you can't love the Almighty, you ain't going to love the brethren. But let's keep going. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost in great fear of all of them that heard of these things. And the young man arose and wound him up and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter uh, uh, answered unto her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yes, yeah, so much. See, these men, mainly out of these camps, it says, uh, submit unto your husband as unto the Lord, obey your husband in all things, you know. Uh, so there's scriptures for that. But the Almighty's law supersedes that. He can't override, take more power than he has. He doesn't have power to get you to sin against the Most High. He's never had that power. The Almighty's never given him that power. You don't follow your husband to damnation. And you better not be following your wife to no damnation. We've seen what happened with Adam. We've seen what happened with Ahab and Jezebel. We've seen all this stuff. You don't, hey, don't follow no one to sin. It says, you know, don't follow no one to sin. Uh, so uh, don't don't let these people, like a perfect example, a big one they do is they say, I don't want you fellowshipping with them no more. Your husband cannot tell you to stop fellowshipping with any brother or sister if not sin is on them. Because it says six things store the Lord hate, seven is about abomination of power, look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, and it deals with this. But the last one is, those that sow discord among the brethren. If you're going to tell me, these husbands, like, I don't want you fellowship with her no more. I don't want you fellowship with him no more. 
you know, if you're going to tell me not to fellowship with the brother and sister, there has to be sin. He is a fornicator, and the Bible says don't even eat with them. He is an adulterer. He is a drunkard. If there's not sin on him, you can't sow discord among the brethren. He says he hates that. You can't put separation amongst brothers and sisters. Your husband does not have power to do that unless there's sin on them. So it says, okay, what has this sister done? Why? Well, just uh... Exactly. No, I don't have to obey that because you don't have that authority to override the Almighty. You don't have, your authority doesn't override the Almighty's authority. So this is what happened. She was privy to it and she had a chance to do right. Here was her chance to do right. Then Peter said unto her, how is it that you agree together to tempt the spirit of the Almighty? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband is at the door. They should carry thee out. And then fell she down straightway at his feet, and they yielded up the ghost. And the young man came and found her and carried her forth and buried her by her husband. That's what happens when you follow your husband to sin or you follow your wife to sin. You can't do that. Don't let that be your happen. But my main point with that is you see how being selfish, you cannot love. The fruit of the spirit is love. So you can't hold two. You can't be selfish and love because you're going to keep back part. You want to start? Look at these. Look at all these people that say shalom and put all these posts on Facebook. How many of them actually take the time to go feed the homeless? You think 50 percent? Doubt it. 20, 20 percent? Doubt it. How many of them? They dress, especially these women, they try to act like they're all holy. All doubts with a whole bunch of makeup. Big old earrings when the Bible says women have to wear jewelry, all this stuff, but they never like do anything of any significance, but just take some pictures and dress all nice, but they don't go feed the homeless. And you could argue, well, it says don't tell your right hand what your left hand's doing. That's true. But every once in a while, go film yourself being a homeless to be an example and being a light to say, hey, this is what the word of the almighty is about. Visiting the fatherless and keep yourself unspotted from the world. Not just taking these nice pictures and spending 200, 300 bucks on some nice clothing because the clothing looks nice. It's, you know, custom decorative clothing. Yeah, that's cool. But you have no substance in the inside. There's no love in the inside. Let's keep going. Give me a Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. We're going to go a little bit faster now. Verse 41. Mark chapter 12, verse 41. Let's get it. And Yeshua sat over the treasury, and behold, how people cast in money into the treasury, and many of them rich gave in much. And these are these people that try to say, oh, tithes and offering was only of the, the fruit. Uh, first of all, not everyone was a farmer. Some people were tent makers. Some people were ironsmiths. Some people uh, did other things. Uh, you know, other uh, was a lumber, was a mason. There was other jobs than everyone just wasn't a farmer. There was masons. There was all this other stuff. So if I'm an ironsmith and you wanted a sword and you paid me money, what is my increase? Because that's like saying your paycheck is not an increase. So that paycheck is just not an increase because you didn't get paid in fruits and vegetables, right? That's not an increase. This is a tenth of all thy increase. So that's not considered an increase. Yeah, exactly. But anyways, so they're putting in money, which is an example. They gave money and not just fruits and vegetables, right? And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which was a farthing. And he called unto his disciples, said unto him, Verily I send you that this poor woman hath cast in more in than all they which cast in the treasury. For all they did cast in their abundance. But she have cast it, did cast all that she had, even her living, even for her, for her food or some clothes. He commended her for giving. But people don't have the fruits of the spirit and they don't give. This is the first part for the almighty so loved the, all, the world that he gave. The first part of love is giving. Period. And he commended, even though she gave left, her heart was right. And even, even though she just had faith, the Almighty's going to take care of me. And she gave, and she will be remembered. Some of you people make more than this woman because you're not poor and you will not be remembered because you're not going to make it into the kingdom because you're too selfish and you don't know how to love. Now, I got to teach the fruits of spirit, so I need to not teach against sin. But think about that. 
This is a poor one. Some of you guys are not poor. Why are you so selfish? Let's keep going. Give me uh, Luke chapter 3. Starting at verse 8. I'm going to start at verse 8. Let's get it. Bring forth their force worthy of repentance and, uh, and, 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 and begin not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham our father. For I say unto you that the Almighty is able of these stones to raise up children of Abraham. So he said, bring forth uh, fruits worthy of repentance. He wasn't baptizing every bit. People just came to the baptism just to condemn. He says, bring forth fruits worthy of repentance. I'm not baptizing everyone. But let's keep going. And now the axe is laid onto the root of the tree. Every tree which bringeth forth not fruit is too down and cast into the fire. And the people asked him and said, What shall we do? And he said unto him, He that have two coats, let him impart unto him that have none. And he that have meat, let him do likewise. If you have extra, you know, impart unto them. And he didn't say give all to your coats because they're self-preservation. So, but it says if you have an extra coat and you see a brother don't have coats, there's this time I bought some, some shoes some brand new shoes. So I had my regular shoes that were beat up and I had some brand new shoes. And I seen some dude that didn't have any shoes on. And I was like, I really didn't want to give him these shoes because if I gave him these shoes, then I had to wear the new shoes and the new shoes were for me to go out looking nice and not for everyday use. But I was like, ah, there you go, sir. And I gave him the shoes There's a couple of times. There's some times I gave him the shoes and they just left them. I'm like, they took them and they gave them some socks too. They took them and then they just left them and they came back and got them. But I thought they were just going to leave them or something. I was like, man, I could have used those shoes. But there's those times. Hey, you know, Job said, I've never seen a person naked. I didn't clothe them. You know, he that have two coats, give him to have none. And don't tell me you've never seen someone walking down the street with no shoes on. All of us. So if you have a pair of shoes or extra pair of shoes, keep it in your car. And you may see a homeless woman or a homeless man. Hey, they have no shoes. Hey, would you like a pair of shoes? Maybe they fit. Maybe they don't. But you never know. If you have some shoes that's beat up, you know you want to throw some away, put some in your car. And you never know when you might see a homeless person and you can help them out. But let's keep going. Uh, get uh, Shout outs. Let's do the shout outs. Shout outs. Katora, uh, Princess Yehuda. William Mormon, Johnny, Gia, Kovesh, Dominga, Angel, Karen, Tobahaya, Will, Anting Neok, Natharawa, Abra Nawa, Hawashi Awa, Gabby, Kamari, Ario, Nava, Kashel, Zahara, Jason. Shout out to you guys. Hey, I appreciate you guys watching the videos. I want you guys to be safe. Let's keep going. Give me Galatians chapter 2. We're going to go faster now, too, because uh, I'm going too long. Galatians chapter 2, starting at verse 9. Galatians 2, verse 9. And when, uh, you sh when uh, James and Cephas and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived that the grace that was given unto me, they gave unto me uh, Barnabas, the right hand of fellowship, that we should go to the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. Only that they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I was uh, also forward to do. So he sent him out to go preach to the Gentiles, the uncircumcised. It says, A, hey, while you walk there and preach the gospel, remember the poor. Make sure you take care of the poor. He's like, I was already afford to do that. That's part of serving the Most High. When we go be the light of the world, it's taking care of the poor. So we need to take, not be selfish with our time to be on Facebook and with our thumbs that's about to get carpet tunnel because you keep just flicking down, flicking down, flicking down, flicking down. Take time out of your day. Go feed the poor. Fortunate for me, there's a laundromat. There's a Dollar Tree right by the laundromat. So when I go to the Dollar Tree, my stuff's in the dryer. I go in there, all right, get some chips, get some crackers, get this, get this, get some juices, get some waters. I'll make a couple of bags or something, and then I just go out and just give a couple of bags every every single day. Not every single day, but when I do laundry, it's real convenient for me because it's like bam, bam. So it's easy for me to do it. If you want to be lazy, go out and just give someone 10 bucks, five bucks. Yeah, hey, I'll give you for food and water in Yeshua's name. If you do it for something else, the Almighty's witness, hey, this is why I gave it to you. That's the laziest way, but you're still going out there and showing some love. Just give them five bucks. If you can't hit 10, 
three people, then give one person 15 or give one person 10 or whatever. And that's the, that's the laziest way, but you can still get it done. It's still you went out there and showed love versus not doing nothing at all. Sometimes I'm in the, you know, I'm busy and I just, hey, here, man, here's five bucks. They expecting a dollar or here's 10 bucks. They typically need to give one or two dollars. I give them 10. Bam, call it a day. You know what I'm saying? Make sure I'm keeping the commandments. Make sure I'm showing love. And it says alms, alms is a shield in the day of adversity because when you come and the famine comes, the Almighty's going to remember you that you gave to the poor and to the widows and to the fatherless. And that famine is not going to affect you like it's going to affect everyone else. But let's keep going. So we're at Galatians chapter two, verse. Uh, then give me First Timothy chapter five. So when they went in to preach the gospel, they was already forward to take care of the poor. That's the first thing. They were healing people, casting out demons out the gate. First Timothy chapter five. Starting at verse one. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, the younger men as brothers, the elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters with all purity. Honor the widows that are widow indeed, but if any widow have a children or nephews, let them learn first to shoot piety at the home and to requite their parents, for this is good and acceptable of the Most High. So if your husband died, your children or whatnot, or their sinner or saint, your children should be able to take care of you. Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate and trusted in the Most High, continue in supplications and prayers night and day. But if she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. And these I give you charge that they may be blameless. But if any provide not for his own, especially of those of his own household, he hath denied the faces worse than the infidel. Some of you brothers or sisters out there are those ones out there that know they have kids and not paying child support. It don't have to be through the court system, but not giving substance to your children that you did, whether you're with the girl or not. Hey, it says you're worse than an infidel. So let's keep going. You people dating, you girls out there trying to date some dude on Facebook, whatnot, saying shalom with some fringes or whatnot. Ask them if they have kids by other women and say, hey, are you giving child support for those kids? You know, oh, well, no, nah, man. Oh, yep, you're worse than an infidel. Keep it pushing. Let's keep going. Let not a widow be taken under the number of three score years old, so that 60 is score is 20. Having been the wife of one man, well reported of works, if she had brought up children. Now remember, a widow indeed is deathly. She don't have no children. But if she brought, if she was babysitting other people's children, let's keep going. Shalom, shalom. If she had brought in children, if she had lodged in strangers, that's hospitality. So if uh, a brother or sister need a place to stay, say, you know, when they come to Belize, we got the church house and whatnot. And if a brother or sister need a, hey, you can stay here or whatnot and open up your doors. Because a lot of people say they believe in the most high and they'll open up their doors to their sisters or their mom or their dad. But then when it comes to brothers keeping the commandments, their sinner mom and dad, they'll let them stay there. But a believing brother and sister, oh, well, I'll pray for you. I don't, oh, I don't know what to say. They won't offer up their house. But here it says, a widow indeed, if she lodged in strangers. And I'm talking about people serving the most high, not just random. Hey, random crackhead, you want to stay at my house? No, that's not what he's talking about. Let's keep going. Um, uh, if she had washed the same feet, so she had humility. Remember, that was a custom back in the day when you came for a far journey and you had sandals or some people were barefooted that you come in and you wash their feet and whatnot. If she had relieved the afflicted, see, this is all stuff she's been doing before she was a widow. She was given. And she had diligently followed every good work. But the younger woman is refused for when they have begun to wax one uh, against, uh, they will marry. She's saying if someone is like, if a widow is like 42 years old, and they say, I'm going to give myself to the Most High. So the congregation says, okay, we're going to take on you financially. You can stay with brother or sister so-and-so's house, or we'll uh, dish out funds to take care of you until you die. We, the congregation is your life insurance. If you get old, any brother or sister that get old, and you've been at this congregation for years or whatnot, and you've been paying tithes in this congregation, when you get to where you can't work no more, you go live with a brother and sister at the congregation, and then and that that's your common lesson home. That is your life insurance. You've been serving the Almighty for so long. We take we don't send brothers and sisters to a common lesson home. We take care of our family. So it's saying the younger ones, they will say, I'm going to give myself to the Almighty, and then they go back and get married. It says, hey, you, you can't have the church take care of you if you're taking in resumes. And it's okay if you're a widow and you're taking in resumes and thinking about remarriage. There's nothing wrong with that by any means. But don't say, I'm just going to give myself to the Most High, and then now you done messed up. Because verse 11, it says, but the younger woman refused for when they had begun waxing 
uh, they wanton against the Almighty, they will marry, have in damnation because they have cast out their first love. If, pe if you made that commitment, oh, I'm just going to give myself to the Most High, I'm not going to get married again, and the next thing you know, you're trying to get married, now you put yourself in a predicament. Read that, all praise to the Most High. Uh, cool, thank you, appreciate that. Now you put yourself in a predicament because you said to the congregation, hey, can you take care of me because I'm going to give myself to the Most High and I'm not going to get married again. And secretly, you've taken in resumes and now you're married now. Like, so then these six, seven years, the congregation been taking care of you, but you jumped and now you're married. It says, no, nah, that, that sh should, should not be. But look at the report of a widow that we take care of. She relieved the effect and she raised, uh, brought in strangers. She took it. She babysit people's children. She was active. She was given. She didn't just say, oh, man, those are my kids. Oh, you're afflicted. Oh, there's nothing I can do. She was showing love the whole time. So, of course, we're going to take care of our brothers and sisters. Of course, that's how the congregation works. But no one preaches that. No one preaches that when you get old, you're supposed to go live with brothers and sisters in the congregation and they take care of you when you're too old to take care of yourself. They don't they will never preach that. Because that takes actually, I don't know, love, you know? That take that you actually have to love people to do that. You have to love people. That means if I get 30 or 40, and I got to take care of a sister that's 80 or a brother that's 70 or 80 that can't work no more and has a bad back. Now I got to take on a load. But if I love the brother, it's nothing. And I got to take care of, hey, if I got to pay for a maid and someone's got to wipe his butt because he can't or he peed and pooped in his pants or something, he's 90 years old. We got to take care of our brothers and sisters. That's how it works. Because I would do it for my center mom. If my center mom was 90 years old, I'll take care of my center mom. I want a center to convalesce at home. That's that center. That's a Gentile way of thinking, sending your family to the convalescent home. Nah. You know what I'm saying? If you don't have the money and means to do it, yeah, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, in the States, it's hard to work a job. And if you don't have money to pay for someone to stay and take care of your family members because they're old and they have some coverage or disability and they'll pay for it, the government will pay for it, uh, maybe. But for the most part, that's that sinner Gentile culture. We don't do that. We take care of our brothers and sisters in the body, and we take care of our family. Same thing. We don't kick our kids out at 20 years old. First of all, age accountability is 20, not 18. We marry them out. My son and my daughter can stay. I don't care if they're 20, 30, 40. They get married out. And two, if it takes you 10 years to find a good wife or a good husband or whatnot, you get married out. You leave the house once you, you get married out of the house. You don't just go out and be on your own. That's why some of your kids go to sin, because you're kicking them out. If they playing around with drugs or if my son is doing some drugs or doing stuff, then, yeah, you kick them out. Hey, but if they're serving the Almighty, you get married out. Stay here. Stack your money. Stack your chips. And then when you're ready, you take your wife and leave your mother and father. You leave my house and you go in to start your own dynasty, start your own family. That's how we do it. We don't follow the Gentile culture. We don't follow that. We follow the Bible culture. Let's keep going. Give me 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. Starting at verse 8. 4 Peter chapter 4 verse 8. I'm going to go fast because uh, time is failing me. I try to keep it under an hour. Praise the Almighty. I got six minutes. 1 Peter chapter 4. We got a lot. Uh, and we'll start at verse 8. Let's get it. It says, Using hospitality one to another without grudging, as every man have received a gift, even minister to the same one to another as good stewards and manifold grace of the Most High. If the Almighty bless me some money or bless me with a house with an extra room or bless me in a situation, this is I'm supposed to use hospitality. Uh, there's no given time where a brother and sister, any brother and sister that I call brother and sister, if I call you brother and sister, then you'll never be homeless. Because even if we have to cram into my house as a sardine, we good. You know, I don't call everyone brother and sister because it says, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they're of God or not. I don't just, just because you wear some fringes and say shalom, and just because you keep the Sabbath, that there's people that keep the Sabbath be smoking weed. So I, I, if you guys like to just give that title to everyone, that's between you, you know, half you, that means your discernment is off because there's no way in the world there's all these people on Facebook and YouTube are brothers and sisters in the most high. Ain't no way in the world everyone's in truth living holy and living clean. There's not, not possible. It says many are called, but few are chosen. So let's keep going. We use in hospitality. If you're not able to open up your house to brothers and sisters, then your love needs to excel. Let's keep going. Romans chapter 12. Five more scriptures. Romans chapter 12. Let 
And we start at verse 10, Romans 12, 10. Let's get it. It says, be kindly affected one to another with brotherly love and honor and, uh, and, honor and prefer one another. So it says, be kind one another and prefer one another. We're supposed to be preferring one another. There's another scripture I want to hit, but I'll be next week because I'm going to go on a deeper level of love. Give me 1 Corinthians. Um, 1 Corinthians 12. And we start at verse 6. No, give me um Ephesians 4. Give me Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. It says, uh, we'll start at verse 27. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the things that which good, but that which is good, that he may have to give to him that needed. Now, if you catch your son stealing candy, you say, "Hey, we don't steal. You work and you buy it." But he took it a step further. You say, "Son, you don't steal. You work." And you buy things so you can help other kids that may not have the money to buy. He didn't just say you just you you, you that still no you need to labor that which is good so you could purchase that thing on your own instead of stealing. No, you need to work not just for yourself so you can help others in need, so you could bring others up. That that's love. He took it to the next level. Let's keep going. Last two scriptures, Matthew 22. Starting at verse 36. Matthew 22, verse 36. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Good question. Yeshua said unto him, Thou shalt love thou the, the Almighty thy Yah with all of thy heart, with all of thy soul, with all of thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So it says, love the Almighty with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. And the second one is love thy neighbor as thyself. Because when you really think about it, let's look at the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not bow down and worship unto them. Okay, two. And you could say, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Let's say three to be in a covenant, right? Let's say three. Three parts of the Ten Commandments apply to the Most High. Thou shalt not murder. That applies to your neighbor. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear falsehoods. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. You know, all the rest deals with loving your neighbor. Only a few commandments actually deal with the most high. The, the majority of commandments deal with loving your neighbor. So it says these two great commandments, love the Almighty with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your might, what not, because Deuteronomy 6, 4 says that too. And it says, love thy neighbor as thyself. Upon these are the two great commandments. Now, last scripture, go ahead and give me Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, starting at verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He asked a good question. A question you're going to get the answer to. What shall you do? And he said to him, um, What readest 
what is written in the law? How read it thou? How you read what, what, you, what you understand? It's in the law. And he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor and, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he said, Willing to justify himself unto Yeshua, and who is my neighbor? Because you would think, oh, every Israelite's my neighbor, maybe. I suppose that you will say your neighbor when they got this commandment under Moses that all Israelites are your neighbors. And Yeshua answered and said, A certain man went down to Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed him, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came a certain priest uh, that way, and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. That's a trip. He was a priest. He should be an example of the righteousness of the law. And likewise, a Levite, uh-oh, another Levite, maybe not a high priest, but he was a Levite, another person that should be an example of the righteousness of the law. Likewise, when he was at the place, came and looked at him and passed by on the other side. And a certain Samaritan, now remember, he said, he said, go preach the gospel, go not in the way of Samaria, but only go to the lost sheep of Israel. So now he says a certain Samaritan, which was a Gentile, not a priest and not a Levite, which was a Gentile. As he journeyed, he came and went and, and where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring oil on and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave it unto the host and said unto him, Take care of him, whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these thinketh thou was the neighbor unto him that fell among thieves? And he said unto him, He that showeth mercy. And he said unto him, Go and do likewise. Do likewise to everyone. Go do likewise. Go do that to everyone. Because he was a Samaritan, and he did that to Hebrew. And his own people didn't do that, but some Gentile did that. You go and show to everyone. Go show love to everyone. Go show mercy to everyone. Because it says, and who is my neighbor? Love thy neighbor as thyself. He gave that example. It says, you go now. There's your example. Go and do likewise. So as the fruits of the spirit, which we're dealing in Galatians, now the fruits of the spirit is love, joy, peace, meekness, and such there is no law. The first part of loving is giving. So with all that said and being done, keep standing. Don't drop standards. Give the Almighty a hand clap. Shalom. Love you guys. I want you guys to make it in the kingdom.